Okay. Great! Hello everyone and welcome to Sunday with Ola 89. Look at this guitar. This is our first production guitar with Sustainiac in it. You, you guys have probably seen me using a Sustainiac guitar before, but that was a prototype. This is like a production model right here. And if you don't know what a Sustainiac is, I did a video on this, but it's basically this. Sustains the notes, baby. Without any effort. Rock and roll, baby. Straight from the soul. Do, do you have to censor my horns, maybe? I'm not a Satanist, but you know, people will say I'm a Satanist. No, this is for metal, okay? It's an M. Just like McDonald's or something. How are you guys doing? First of all, I have to say thank you so much for all the support you guys. Last week's campaign with the 10 euro Chug Life t-shirt. Uh, let's just say we sold a lot. Way more than we expected. So in the other room right there, I can hear my uh, employees, you know, my brother uh, Joel and my sister-in-law, they're printing and packing like maniacs out there and we're not going to be able to ship everything this week but we're working as good as we can and we're working as hard as possible to make and fulfill all these orders as quick as possible we get them all out this coming week for sure so guys thank you so much for that support that mel baby the news hello So two weeks ago I talked about the Vinipal auction, basically the Vinipal estate auction off a fair bit of memorabilia, uh, drum kits, guitars, you name it, it was 700 items, a lot of stuff. And this past Sunday that whole auction ended and I actually put a couple of bids in for some, some things. Okay, uh, not on the drum kits. I mean, this drum kit right here, I think it's like, I think it went for around $20,000. And, you know, considering that this kit on its own, if you would just go and purchase this kit in a store, that alone would be like probably 10 grand or something. Another 10 grand that Vinny has been playing this set. Uh, if you're a collector and an absolute fan, it, it's not too bad of a price actually, not that I can afford it or anyone else uh, in the world. But uh, you know, if you're a fan and you have money, it's actually a really good deal. I actually put a bid on this platinum album right here. This is the platinum album for Cowboys from Hell. It went up for like, I think it ended at like five to six thousand dollars or something like that. It was insane. And the one for Far Beyond Driven went for ten thousand dollars. This Washburn D3 USA made went for about twenty-four thousand dollars, I think. Hi yeah, that's a lot of money, but I mean, it is a one-off. It was gifted from Dimebag to Vinny, and uh, it's the only one I've seen with a pick guard. So, I mean, it's cool, man. I really hope that all these items go to fans, like legit fans, and not some hoarder or you know someone that's gonna sell it for even more expensive later. I just wish that this auction was legit. Okay, I actually won five items, not, not anything bad, not any guitars or anything like that, not the, uh, you know, uh, My Planet Caravan bongo drums or anything like that, small items. I'll let you guys know when I receive them, I'm gonna make a video obviously, uh, very excited about that. Alright, so last week NAM happened and uh, as you can see, I was not at NAM. I'm right here right now, which is a bummer, I, I kind of wished to go to NAM this year. Obviously I wish to go to NAM because I, I enjoy NAM a lot, but it's just not the same this year, obviously. And you probably already noticed none of the big brands were there. I mean, in terms of metal guitars, I think ESP guitars, I think Aristides were there, Ernie Ball, and uh, a couple of other ones. But other than that, it was, there was no one there. I think a lot of brands, including my own brand, was kind of waiting it out a little bit, see how this NAM will fare, and then kind of take a decision for how we will go and if we would attend next year. NAM took a, a heavy toll from COVID, just saying. And uh, I'm not sure we will go back to normal in regards to NAM because a lot of brands have probably already adapted to not having a NAM every year and you know spend more money on online marketing rather than you know pay for an expensive booth at NAM. So I think probably we're gonna have a bigger NAM next year, 
But, uh, you know, it's not going to be as big as ever, just saying. Uh, I, I think eventually, and unfortunately, that NAND will die out. That's just the, the harsh reality right there. Uh, the COVID and, uh, you know, everything else just made it happen quicker. You know, but nonetheless, there were NAM news and we're going to check out the most important NAM news. And the first piece of news is that Tosin Abasi is coming of age as a guitar designer. So Tosin Abasi and Ernie Ball announced a collaboration, which is the Kaisen guitar, which is, you know, an Ernie Ball guitar. It's not a Tosin Abasi, Abasi guitar concept guitar. It's an Ernie Ball guitar. And a lot of people are like, huh? Why? Well, just imagine this. Tosin is a designer of guitars. He can design guitars for another brand. That's basically what it is. It's a, it's a design collaboration, okay? And this is the Kaisen right here. Look at that. That looks like it's taken from, you know, the Doom game or something like that. It's very futuristic looking. But something I thought was really cool, and I can't for the life of me... Uh, happen. Uh, something that I thought was really cool on this guitar is that there's no tuning pegs. Look at that. The tuning pegs are in the, the tuner right there, on the top. So you tune the guitar on the top of the tuner. I've never seen that before. And that's kind of cool, I guess. But look at this. It's like, it's it's the future guitar right there. Just saying. Multi-scale, seven string, uh, older body, roasted maple neck, ebony fretboard, 2475 to 25 and a half. Okay, for the low... E. At the low E. Low, they have to mean low B. And I like how it's kind of, you know, off the charts a little bit. It doesn't... It looks a little bit like a... Like an Ibanez... Is it Cyphos? The, uh, the, the X-shape Ibanez they have? But, you know, I like this. I like this collaboration. And that was like the first and biggest news from them. News number two is there's still a plan of life left in the Kirk Hammond ESP relationship. Uh, okay, so there's a gold thing right there. Steve Vai doesn't need to be at the show to make a big splash. Th that's his hydro guitar right there. It was the damn. There's a 35th anniversary swirl finish Pia. Uh, and the fresh blue powder one. I don't know if you... I'll see if I can bring up an image. But it's basically a new Pia with like a baby blue color. Which is kind of cool if you like baby blue. Uh, other than that, man. Eastman is developing bold new solid body guitar shapes. And Martin has built over 2.5 million acoustics, which is great. Uh, Future of Amps is on your pedal board. Two Notes Revolt Analog Amp Sim. That's a cool pedal right there. Uh, Telecaster tremolos are so hot right now. And you know what? I think that seeing these exciting news, I mean, you know, the Abbasi and Ernie Ball collaboration, that's definitely exciting. But just seeing how little news it was this year coming straight from Nam. It's a little worrying, I must say. I mean, I think a lot of these other brands, they basically made their press releases online. And they weren't even attending this. Or they're not even putting the news here. They're just scattering and putting out news throughout the rest of the year. And I think that this is probably where things are going to go for a lot of brands. I mean, we already did it with Solar Guitars where we, you know, we just release news whenever we want. Uh, why would everyone just put their releases at the exact same time right now in in January in a distributor dealer you know hierarchy that makes sense because then distributors gets to gets to purchase things and uh, for the the rest of the year basically that makes a lot of sense but I, that's just not how it's gonna go from now on I think we're gonna see brands just releasing news all over the year now and not have them concentrated to NAM. So uh, it's it's interesting seeing how NAM will develop. And I'm really curious of how it will be next year. I really hope I can attend with solo guitars next year. We just have to see how the the year turns out and pans out basically. I just thought it was really interesting and I think it's worth discussing. All right, next piece of news. Polyphia drummer's monitors fail live. Drum tech taps tempo on his leg for the rest of the show. This is mega impressive. Polyphia played at May 27th date of the So What Music Festival and things went a little rockier than they may have looked to the audience. According to a video posted by Mel Belmont guitarist Jason Tyler, Polyphia drummer Clay Ashley Man, it... I don't know if that's how you say it. Ashley Man, Ashley Man, Ashley Man, uh, in-ears monitor failed sometime during the band set. This meant that Ashley Man 
uh, couldn't hear his Polyphia bandmates at all or have any sort of metronome to keep himself in time. Fortunately, Ashley Man, <laughs> I'm sorry, I really hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I, I don't want to disrespect or anything. Drum Tech Crystalline came over to tap out the tempo on his leg. And of course, it helps that Ashley Man <laughs> knew the music by heart. How impressive this is. Okay, let's check it out. Musician's Nightmare. Okay. He turns to the sound crew and he says, I can't hear shit. And his, his in ears with the metronome and track stop working. And there is the drum tech tapping the legs for the tempo. And that is, that is actually kind of cool. He stood like this for 30 minutes, tapping the tempo of the song. This seems like an incredible nightmare, obviously, uh, <laughs> to go through something like this. I mean, maybe we have come to this point where we just became too technical in terms of how we listen to each other on stage. And, you know, sometimes back in the day, you would just have screaming monitors that would just explode in your face and you heard everything in them. That's kind of like the, the, the problem with in-ears, is that if you don't have any backup monitors, you're f***ed, basically. So, personally, I use in-ears when I play with the Haunted, but I also have this monitor in front of me to kick back some audio to, uh, towards me. So, if I don't like the in-ears, I can always shut them off and just listen to the, the monitors in front of me. If you go completely silent on stage, this might become a problem. Next piece of news. Kirk Hammett screwed up the Nothing Else Matters intro live and had a good laugh about it. Okay, seriously though, Hammett had a good laugh. Let's check it out. I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh shit. Come on guys. Metallica, how many shows have they played? Like probably you know, thousands of shows. Something like this is bound to happen at a show. Just saying. It must be so hard to be in a, such a big band. There's a lot of pressure, man. They're playing in front of like 50,000 to 80,000 people and then you fuck up. It's <laughs> That can't be... that can't be easy, just saying. Alright, Dave Mustaine has entered the YouTube world. What? Maybe Dave Mustaine got a little inspired by Kiko, who's been doing a really great job with his YouTube channel. He's been vlogging and if you haven't checked out the vlogs by Kiko, they're amazing, by the way. You can see a glimpse of the backstage action and what happens behind the stage uh, on a negative show. It's really something. Well, now Dave Mustaine... And, oh shit, I haven't even uh, subscribed. Dave Mustaine has a new YouTube channel. Alright. Here it is, the introduction. Hey, it's Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I know it's long overdue, but hey, we're finally here. Did There's you just wake up? Slides in when we drive and slides out. Yep, we had one of those things where you can, you know, elongate the bus. Uh, Marcos' uh, shoe got stuck in it when it, <laughs> when it went in, so uh, his shoes got destroyed. Oh, and of course, Dave has the back group. That makes a lot of sense. He is the star. You know, he doesn't really have that many videos on here, but... They're working on it. Okay, in the dressing room? Yes, Alright, I go check on it I right think now, they're then. probably gonna make it like... Uh, this is a very short video right there. Oh, they're making the set list right there. Symphony! Yeah! <laughs> really? Yes, sir. What will this uh, YouTube channel be? Uh, we, we just have to wait and see. There's only two videos and then three uh, shorts. But I'm excited. I'm subscribed now. And last but not least, Lamb of God announces Omen's album, Summerfall 2022 tour with Killswitch Engage. So a new album with Lamb of God, okay. Out October 7 through Epic Records. First single from the effort, Nevermore, will arrive on Friday, June 10th. Oh shit, that's in a couple days. Since I'm recording this just before June 10th, I probably have to make a short little segment where I check it out. That goes here. Let's... I want to do one of these. Tra I want to do one of these transitions. Hello, this is me on a Friday. I'm in bed. I'm watching the new single. It's good, man. It's badass. I love it. They're in a truck. How cool is that? <gasps> All right, shit. What a good transition. I always wanted to do that, but uh, I just haven't had a good opportunity. So there you go. That's the news. Who's up there? You won't escape that way.
All right, Adventures with Ola. So because of that last week's campaign where we had the Chug Life uh, t-shirt for 10 euros, uh, well, we didn't expect uh, how many would purchase. So if you go outside right here, you know, it's full on factory right here. Hey, Freak. Hi. So we're printing. Here's Joel printing. We got Maria. She's packing stuff over there with a nice t-shirt on. Uh, I need some help, Joel. Sure. Uh, I have a new cool thing. I'm gonna explain what it does and what it is. Very lightweight. Well, let's go in here. I'll show you what it is and why. You might think, oh, this might be a new headless guitar because the package is so, uh, looks like a headless guitar package. No, it's not. You ready? This is a very important item for me and I'm gonna explain why. Ta-da! Look at that. Can you see? It's a man. <laughs> Actually, a, a pretty well equipped man. Just saying. <laughs> Makes me feel a little inadequate. Look at this. Look at that ass, man. Holy shit. Oh, yes, a hair in his ass. Hang on. Look at that. Holy shit. If I knew he would be this well endowed, maybe I should pick a, a different type of mannequin. You know, there's an actual reason why I have this mannequin. Uh, I'm gonna show you in a second. So a common problem that me and Joel have when we're filming is that we're usually filming on our own, right? And sometimes autofocus is a problem. We usually shoot all our videos in manual, right? Usually we film by ourselves. So it's really tough for us to get focus on the camera or the correct focus. So I figured let's buy a mannequin and put it where, you know, you should put the focus. So right here, I'm setting up for Sunday with Ola, for instance. I figured I would put myself like that. Look at that. And then over here at the camera, manual focus and focus it on this beautiful body that is not a good representation of what I look like. Actually, it's very accurate, very, very accurate. And that's usually how I sit right there. But as you can see here, check it out. Look at that. It's in focus, baby. All right, let's see. There we go. Perfect. All right, so I have a great idea. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to uh, explain a little about the struggles of being a YouTuber. It's not easy focusing on things here and there. I mean, if I would focus on the chair, it wouldn't be good enough. So if I have a mannequin face, it'll just be a lot better. So there you go. Question of the day from Mark Purnell. Here's something I wondered for a while. Is it becoming more difficult to keep Dimebag relevant? I love Dime and he's by far one of my favorite guitarists, but I feel that a lot of the younger generations, he's not such a big pull. The hard drinking, hard partying image isn't so popular and all the concert image is all camcorder level. Compared to a lot of the modern players who have the advantage of super slick production and editing facilities at their disposal. And is this something more felt on the European scene compared to the States where obviously they toured more etc. That's actually a legit question and uh, it's something I've been thinking about a lot obviously because I am, you know, Pantera is my favorite band and Dimebag is my favorite guitarist and you know the guitar player that's inspired me the most. Yes, it is actually getting harder and harder to keep Dimebag and Pantera relevant uh, and I hate to say it because we're not getting any more new music. There's not too many bands that are pushing the Pantera flag anymore. I mean, Phil is out there doing the vulgar display of Pantera thing, which I think is great because then, you know, at least an audience can, can get the Pantera vibe going, even though Dimebag and Vinny is not there playing. But I think it's still, you know, a good way of just pushing Pantera, man. Cover bands are also great, but that's as close as possible right now, right now that you can get to Pantera is just watch Phil and his band play. Uh, Pantera songs. But at the same time, there's a generation shift happening and younger players and younger uh, people get interested into music and lifted into music. I mean, Pantera is not going to be there because there's a lot of other 
exciting new bands that people are going to listen to. So eventually, you know, Pantera will be phased out, just like a lot of other bands. And uh, how do bands stay relevant today? Well, they release new music, just like Metallica, you know, and uh, other big acts. It's not as easy when you're not releasing new music or don't have any pieces of news. I think the Dimebag Estate is doing a really good job at still pushing Pantera, and pushing merch and new shit with Dimebag. We're also going to see Dimebag guitars happening, which is great. I'm trying to do my part by doing covers, you know, just show my incredible love for whatever Dimebag related things, you know, because it's really important to me. But at the same time, you know, I went to the Dime Bash when I went to Texas and I expected it to be impact. It was at the Gas Monkey Bar and Grill in Dallas. You know, that was a venue for like 1500 people maybe. I played there before with uh, The Haunted and even I think also Six Feet Under once. And it's a really big ass venue for like a 1500 people. I kind of expected it to be packed. I can't say it was packed, man. And it kind of shocked me a little bit. There was a lot of people there, but not as much as I expected. And it bummed me out a little bit because, you know, I want it to be big, you know, and I want it, want it to be relevant. You know, you go back and watch those home videos, man, and they're just, you know, packed out full shows. And I feel sorry for that because I think they deserve way more. They deserve to have fucking packed houses for the events. I think Dimebag on its own will always stay a legend forever. And uh, Vinnie Paul also, obviously, but it's gonna, just like everything else in the world, it's gonna fade out, unfortunately. It's tough, man. It's tough. It breaks my heart a little bit. But, you know, I'm gonna keep on pushing, you know, Dimebag related shit. I feel that I owe it to them because they meant a lot to me when I was a teenager. When, you know, my guitar playing life, you know, they inspired me so much. I owe it to them. So, but we all have to do this together, man. Great question, man. It, uh, and that, my friends, was Sunday with Ola right there. Sunday with Ola Rift Challenge. The live stream happens tomorrow, 2 o'clock CET. Let's check out some submissions for Sunday with Ola 88. Okay, it's happening on my second channel. And guys, thank you again for all the support you've given me and, you know, for buying merch and all that. It really means a lot to us. And, uh, yeah, I can feel it. Hope you had a great Sunday. I hope you have an excellent day. Hug someone today. Preferably your mom, your kids, your, your loved ones, whatever, man. Just hug someone. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.